So now we're going to begin our shading demo. We are going to be shading with charcoal, and we have two different kinds of charcoal. We have what's called vine charcoal and compressed charcoal, and they're very, very different from one another. I've got a scratch sheet of paper over here so that I can test things out. I guess I'm going to start this right there. The vine charcoal is very, very soft and light, and what you'll notice about vine charcoal is that it can rub away almost completely uh, after we have rubbed on that a little bit. If you compare that to compressed charcoal, compressed charcoal will still smudge, but it won't disappear the way that vine charcoal does. So it's often a good idea to begin with the vine charcoal, especially if you're a beginner and you're a little bit unsure, and then transition into um, the compressed charcoal. Okay, so I've got my basic contour sketch in here. Uh, what I am going to do is I am going to begin in the darker areas. We want to save the light areas because obviously uh, the light areas need very little charcoal and if we go straight in there it's going to make marks that are hard to get rid of. I'm going to go in with my vine charcoal first. Initially I'm going to go over some of the basic contour lines with it. like so, okay? I'm not going to worry about those so much because those um, lines are fairly established. And I'm going to begin filling in these shadow areas to the left side of the face. Now we lightly sketch the borderline right about here where it transitions from the mid-tone into the shadow. So I'm going to start right there with some relatively light hatching lines. Okay, now that looks really, really rough, but unlike graphite, in charcoal, it's completely okay to smudge. In fact, it's completely expected. So you see, after I've done that, I can blend it in, and it's very, very smooth now. By the way, if you see this little mark that's going through here, that's one of those places where I took the eraser across very, very roughly. That's the kind of thing we're trying to avoid when we're making our eraser marks, so be careful about that. Okay, we don't want to overdo the application in the light areas, so rather than introduce more charcoal into the light area, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep adding it here where the shadow is and making little circles with my finger or broad motions like this, I'm going to bring it across from that side. Okay, so I'm getting a transition right here. If I want more, I'll come and add to this side. If you see where the hair in the background is, that's very, very dark. So where that hair is going to be, right on the edge of that forehead. I'll come in with a little of that color, a little of that value. I'll begin bringing it across and blending it in a little bit. Like that. Okay, now this got a lot lighter, so I may need to come in afterward and hit that again with some more charcoal to make it darker. What you'll notice though is that once you touch it, that compressed charcoal basically disappears again. So there's a point at which you've got to transition into the compressed charcoal. to get some significant darks. 
One additional tool I'm going to introduce now is called a tortillon, or a blending stump. So this charcoal that I put in here is really quite rough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this tortillon. to smooth that out a little bit, okay? I'm going to blow the dust off, and now I'm going to go with my finger, and I'm going to just barely soften the border between that dark hair and the side, okay? I'm also going to put a little bit more tone in the hair over here. because I don't feel I've gotten quite rich enough in these areas in terms of tone. Okay, by the way, you see what I just did there, how I went back and forth? That is not the best way to do it, especially when you've got char uh, compressed charcoal. If you go side to side, what will eventually end up happening is you'll get marks at either end where your finger is changing directions and you'll have really, really strong fingerprints. So it's better to sort of graze it like this, where you're coming in from above, hit and pass like that. Or make continuous circles. Okay. Right here I would like to transition into something a little bit darker. But if I go in with a compressed charcoal, I'm afraid that I'll end up with streaks. So what I'm going to do is go to my scratch of paper, and ideally you would be doing this um, on a flat surface so your dust wouldn't fall to the floor, but I'm filming so I don't have that option. I'm going to load up my finger with some of that charcoal dust. And I'm going to come in to where I want that core shadow to be. And I'm going to continue darkening it until I'm satisfied with that value, all right? And I'm going to uh, stop the recording now, get a little bit farther in the progress, and then you can rejoin me when we get to the, um, the more delicate facial features in the center.